to the insulin which will avoid taking the glucose for its function. So in this case, when the glucose is secreted by the uh, pancreas, the glucose will be in the bloodstream, but it will not be uh, used by the cells or the tissues. So it will where the, it, it becomes insulin resistant. So in that case, what happens is due to the high glucose concentration in the blood, the chondrocyte cells. Like I'll be explaining how this affects the osteoarthritis. So this is the basics. Uh, uh, basically, this is the type two diabetes, and uh, the high glucose concentration causes the local toxicity in the blood, and it also on the joint tissue and increases the local oxidative stresses. Then uh, the main solutions what we have for the uh, diabetes is the temporary solutions are eating healthy, regular physical exercises, weight management, stress management and blood sugar monitoring. So considering these two diseases as separate diseases, let us see how is it linked to each other. So basically what's happening in the case of the comorbidity or uh, in a case of a patient who has the diabetes, how is he prone to get the osteoarthritis? So what is happening is due to the high glucose concentration, it is kind of inducing an oxidative stresses which is affecting the chondrocyte cells in the cartilage. So cartilage is an avascular tissue. Uh, so because of that, it is it has only one cell which will provide the nutrients for its uh, for its survival. So when this oxidative stresses affects the chondrocyte, then it causes the cartilage degeneration. Then then it causes it, it totally damages the cartilage tissue. So because of all this, uh, uh, I mean uh, factors, the person who has the type 2 diabetes is almost very much prone to get the osteoarthritis. So how are we tackling, like how, how are we addressing this issue? So basically in this project, the research vision is to understand the degenerative model in this comorbidity and then identify a lubricant medium, a temporary lubricant medium which can be injected in this interface, uh, which can kind of reduce the pain for this particular case and then this avoids the total joint replacement in the old patients. So this is a research vision. So coming to the objectives, how are we performing this? Basically, first we are trying to understand the cartilage structure by structural characterization both qualitatively and quantitatively. For qualitative techniques, we are using the SEM and uh, for quantitative techniques, we are using the Raman. In this uh, presentation, I will be showing only the SEM and Raman, not the AFM. So, and then later, we will be uh, validating this characterization results with the histomorphology or the histomorphometric studies. Then we are we will be analyzing the, the degenerative model using the enzymatic degradation. I'll explain what is enzymatic degradation in the later presentation. So once we do the structural characterization and validate the uh, uh, with the histology, we will be performing the indentation test and tribology test to understand the mechanical and tribological properties of the cartilage. So once we do the tribology test we will be able to validate an emerging medical technology that is a fluid lubricant which can be inserted in the cartilage interface uh, to reduce the uh, pain and increase the sanguine lubrication. So this is a kind of a, 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 a technique which where we, we need a lot of trial and error where uh, uh, we need to test the different synovial composition and see which is the composition which is kind of uh, providing the better lubrication or providing the, the best uh, lubrication in case of the synovial joints. So coming to the articular cartilage, so articular cartilage is one of the uh, the amazing tissue I can say we have in, in, in the diarthral joints. The reason is because though we have a lot of movements in the diarthral joints, this cartilage it, it literally provides the zero like frictionless uh, movement. So here we can see the value of coefficient of friction of the cartilage surfaces at interface is around 0.005. It is nearly zero, not zero, but nearly zero. And the wear rate is around 0.1 to 10 micrometer per year. And the surface roughness is 0.01 and elasticity modulus is 0.5 to 10 megapascal. So the main uh, function of the cartilage is it provides load bearing and lubrication at the synovial fluid shock absorption, joint stability and maintenance and repair. So cartilage is very much necessary for a synovial joint in order to have a proper uh, uh, activities. So coming to the, uh, how, how are we doing the qualitative analysis? So basically uh, qualitative analysis is performed through the uh, SEM images. So in SEM images what we are trying to understand is in cartilage there are different zones zones and each zone has different type of arrangements uh, within the collagen fibers and proteoglycans. 
So as we can see that the first layer that is a superficial zone has a panel arrangement of collagen fibers and middle zone has a kind of a, a 45 degree arrangement in case of the bovine and uh, in case of the human cartilages it is random arranged and in the deep zone as well as uh, it is radially arranged and calcified and bone region. So basically in case of the cartilage these three zones are the very important zone that is a superficial middle and deep zone which will uh, explain us how the cartilage degeneration takes place. So in order to understand how this uh, collagen fibril arrangements or the proteoglycan damages is taking place, we are trying to image it. So we can see that this is a first, uh, the image of the superficial zone where we can see the thick arrangement of the collagen fibril and uh, and this images will uh, give us a, uh, this is an image of a healthy bovine cartilage, it is not a degenerative cartilage. However, in case of, I, have, uh, I don't have the results for the degenerative cartilage, but in case of the degenerative cartilage, it has been shown that the arrangement, how the thick collagen fibrils are there, it will be damaged. So this, the same for the case of the middle and deep zone. In the, in the middle zone, we can see the arrangement of the collagen fibrils with the cellular lacrimis. And in case of the uh, deep zone, we can see the arrangement of the uh, collagen fibrils with the cellular lacrimis. But what is the difference between these two images? The main difference is the amount or the area of the cellular lacunae. So in case of the uh, middle zone, the cellular lacunae is much smaller compared to that of the deep zone. The reason is the, the amount of the collagen fibril from the superficial zone to the deep zone decreases uh, from radially. So it means superficial zone has the higher um, highest amount of the collagen fibrils and it decreases radially. In the similarly, proteoglycans is the opposite, where proteoglycans is lower at the superficial zone and it increases throughout the deep zone. So in order to understand how these whole zones are kind of getting degenerated, we have to understand the, uh, the cellular lacunae structure because that is the region where proteoglycans are located. So in case of the osteoarthritis, the main composition which is damaging is the proteoglycan. So if we understand how the cellular lacunae structures are varying from each, uh, in, from superficial to deep zone, we would get to understand how the proteoglycans are damaging in case of the degenerative model. So this is the qualitative technique. In case of the quantitative technique, we have performed uh, uh, the Raman uh, spectroscopy. So here in the Raman spectroscopy, we have tried to get the uh, the wavelength of the, the Raman wavelength where uh, for the superficial zone, middle, deep and calcified region. So basically here you can see the color coding where we can see the proteoglycans are basically represented the green lines and the collagen are represented by blue lines. So these peaks shows us how much amount of the proteoglycans or how much amount of the collagen fibrils are uh, present in case of the superficial, middle, deep and calcified and bone region. So this basically what we are trying to get from that result is the distribution of or the change of the collagen fibrils and the proteoglycan uh, I mean the in quantitatively so that means how the ratio of uh, the, the proteoglycans that is also called as a glycosamine of glycans how is it how is that ratio differing in case of the superficial middle and deep zone basically as I told uh, in uh, in principle the superficial zone should have a very less proteoglycan and deep zone should have a higher proteoglycan. That is what we are seeing in case of the healthy cartilage. However, in case of the degenerative cartilage, this would be uh, different because the proteoglycan will damage and then it causes the uh, larger space of the cellular lacrimis. So this we have also tested using the indentation test and tribology sliding test. So basically in the indentation test, why we are trying to perform is this is a magnetic contact, contact area setup where uh, this is a, a, a home built uh, tri uh, tribometer where it, ki it kind of uh, uh, applies the pressure through this cantilever, piezoelectric cantilever uh, the edge where of, or this is a pin and this is a plate. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to indent the cartilage surface with a glass, spherical glass probe. So this indentation kind of helps us to understand how much amount or how much amount of interstitial lubrication, uh, uh, interstitial fluid can ooze out of the cartilage surface which will give us information such as the mechanical properties that elastic modulus, permeability etc. Similarly, the, the same setup is used for sliding experiment where we are going to perform the sliding uh, with the different loads and different speed. So this will give us an idea of how much is the coefficient of friction in the case of the cartilage surface at the glass interface. So this can also be performed with the cartilage on cartilage uh, uh, setup. But uh, however, in order to, uh, since the cartilage uh, 
uh, is not an even surface, it is an uneven surface, we do not get a, a right uh, coefficient of friction if we perform with Cartesian cartilage. So, you know, uh, to understand just the, uh, the surface properties of the cartilage, we have performed this using the migratory uh, contact area experiments. So, when we see the results, the indentation test, what we have performed is basically we have tried to load the cartilage uh, surface with a particular uh, load that is a millinewton, 20 millinewton, and we hold the surface, uh, I mean, with the, with the same load, we hold it for a certain duration and then we unload it. So, this is the uh, force displacement time graph, but if this is the force versus displacement graph, it shows the uh, how much amount of uh, loading, holding, and unloading for different loads. But here we can see that in case of the displacement, when we are at the holding phase, you can see that there is a displacement of the interstitial fluid. Though we are uh, the uh, force is stationary, the interstitial fluid is varying at the cartilage interface with the glass surface. So this shows that the interstitial fluid has a different creep behavior. That is the biphasic nature of the cartilage. So basically, with this uh, uh, 20 millinewton, we got the elasticity modulus of the cartilage is 4.42 megapascals. So similarly, we perform the tribology test. So for the tribology test, this is also at the 20 millinewton. So here, the coefficient of friction, the average coefficient of friction, which we got was 0.0347, which is validated with the literature. So, uh, so basically, these tests can be done at different duplication uh, mediums. This is done in the PBS medium. However, when we have the proper sign, when we get to have the cartilage degenerative model, this will be performed in a different synovial composition medium, varying what uh, the synovial compositions like the lubricin, globulin. Uh, so we get to know what would be the uh, coefficient of friction, how coefficient of friction would vary at that particular interface. So these are the tests. And this is a future work where we, we are trying to understand both the qualitative and quantitative characterization technique through the histomorphology. So what we are trying to do is take the cartilage structure, embed it, and uh, I mean demineralize it first, embed it, section it, and then stay and understand how the cartilage, same uh, uh, cartilage structure is varying in, uh, in all the uh, uh, layers. So basically, histology is something which is uh, used to evaluate the cartilage health in case of the osteoarthritis severity and uh, histology is used to determine the disease state with respect to the osteoarthritis in the cartilage matrix. So this basically helps us in determining what is a diseased cartilage, what is the uh, healthy cartilage. So with that, we are trying to develop a degenerative model using enzymatic degradation. So what we are trying to do is, we are trying to understand how this degeneration takes place in cartilage in the case of the early osteoarthritis. Because uh, this ex this project is basically, it will be done with a human cartilage at one point. I'm still in my first year. So uh, in the, uh, however, when I get a human cartilage, the cartilage, would, uh, what I'm going to get from humans are the cartilage which is totally degenerated. That is, person who is undergoing the total joint replacement, that cartilage. That means the cartilage uh, osteoarthritis in a very severe state. But we have to understand how is the osteoarthritis in the early stages of the cartilage. So in order to understand that, we are trying to induce the uh, cartilage degenerative enzymes, that is chondrotinase or trypsin, uh, MMP2. So based on those degenerative uh, enzymes, we are using the cartilage and we will uh, try to see how it changes the cartilage uh, zones as well as how it changes the proteoglycan and collagen networks. Uh, similarly, we will be inducing the diabetes in the cartilage and then uh, by, uh, by uh, um, uh, keeping the cartilage in the uh, hyperglycemic media that is in the high glucose concentration and see how the zones change. So, we, and then combine these two in order to understand the comorbidity of the disease uh, both uh, osteoarthritis and diabetic cartilage. So uh, this results what we are going to get will be verified with the patient's cartilage which we are going to get from the, uh, the from the total joint replacement surgeries. So this is a disease modeling and in order to validate what we are going to get the synovial fluid compositions. So basically we have a lot of uh, uh, techniques like the medical techniques which has which are being used on the cartilage but they are not very effective as we say there are lots of joint lubricants uh, like anti-inflammatory drugs graft transfer techniques but still in case of the older patients i think it is much needed for them that uh, 
we need to provide a solution which is much easier and they can uh, afford it and also they can uh, i mean it can be curable in a faster way so that is the main reason why we are trying to understand how the synovial fluid lubrication can change the cartilage friction so yeah these are my supervisors So the patients can be like without pain for six, seven months with those injections, but they have to keep on taking those injections. However, in case of total joint replacements, if a person like if he is 70, 80 years old and if they undergo the joint replacement, then the recovery rate is so less and also the uh, the complexities with that age undergoing the total joint replacement is so high. So it is better to have uh, temporary replication injections for 86 months. 